The Rock Snobs Dictionary, Laurel Canyon. Hilly, Los Angeles neighborhood located directly north of the Sunset Strip that was home to a chill, open-door music scene idealized by today's more hairy and historicist rock snobs. From the mid-60s into the next decade, newly rich pop and rock stars started infesting the canyon's winding roads and woody houses. I like things that have roots. Whether it was Jackson, Joni, James, or Carol, you could find them all up in the canyon, enveloped in denim and cocooned behind curtains of macrame, batik, and very long, center-parted hair. This was made for me by a girl named Joellen. So beautiful, little birds here. It was the period of, as L.A. producer and rock snob godhead Lou Adler put it, the transition from cool to mellow. Now we're going to do um, organ, and uh, I'm going to give it Carol on an overdose. The cover of Carol King's 1971 smash, Tapestry, nails the Laurel Canyon ideal, Pop's natural woman, in her house on Wonderland Avenue with her cat, Telemachus, resting on an exotically upholstered pillow. Perfect. See the lonely boy out on the weekend. Ever prescient, Neil Young was the first to puncture the canyon mystique in his 1974 song, Revolution Blues. Well, I hear that Laurel Canyon is full of famous stars, but I hate them worse than lepers, and I'll kill them in their cars. I have to admire Neil for sticking so true to the muse. For many years after, the Laurel Canyon scene was deeply uncool to rock snobs. Wussy old music for moms and dads. But time heals all wounds. And today, no. a whole new wave of snob-approved young artists, all of them born well after James Taylor last had hair on the crown of his head, are actively cultivating a so-called Laurel Canyon sound. And Laurel Canyon itself, like all bohemian enclaves of yesteryear, it was long ago or schwazified. But in the right light, under the right stand of ancient oaks, with some solo David Crosby playing on the car stereo, you can still catch that feeling. Nah, it's all over.